is Jewel Dro and I like football. I like football because of the passion. I like football because of the atmosphere. And I like football because it's the only place where white working class men don't mind foreigners taking all of our jobs. <laughs> I love football. I'm a Chelsea fan. I go quite regularly, but I don't just go for the beautiful game. No, I go because I like to watch the people in the crowd. Because you get a different kind of person in the crowd at football. You get a kind of a geezer, a blokey bloke, an alpha male. Now, as far as I can work out, there's two things you need to be a geezer, a blokey bloke, an alpha male. The first thing you need is to be bald and overweight. <laughs> that on its own won't qualify though, because you know, Elton John and Mo Molan. <laughs> no. You need a second quality, and that is a unique way to communicate. Now where I sit, about two rows behind me, is a geezer, blokey bloke, alpha male, and sometimes he wants to communicate with someone about two rows in front of me. When he wants to get his attention, he makes this noise. Oi, oi, Frankie boy! <laughs> to which the one about two rows in front of me usually majestically replies like this. Oh, I pity you old bastard! <laughs> it's like a whale song for hooligans. <laughs> As I said, I like football. Uh, I'm a Chelsea fan and last season uh, I went to a game with my dad and my brother. Now there was nothing that eventful about the game, uh, but the pub afterwards was quite eventful. Now being Chelsea, the rest of the week it's got to be like a swanky West London cocktail bar. But on a Saturday, uh, well it looks quite different. It's got kind of like oriental uh, decoration hanging up. It's got like marble statues of deities with price tags on. Looks a bit like an antique shop filled with extras from Football Factory. <laughs> I half expected to see David Dickinson chiving someone up in the corner. Call me, you little bastard, and give me that Ming Dynasty Chinese cock. Oh, cheap as chips. <laughs> but I didn't. What I did see was a television in the corner. It had the evening game on, which was uh, Man United, Aston Villa. Nil-nil after 80 minutes. Now, my business brain gets working, and I think, right, I'm going to offer my dad and, uh, and my brother a bet here. I say, I bet someone scores before the game finishes. So they accept. 85th minute, Nanny runs in for the wing. He beats two players and bang, go! 1-0 Man United. I go, yes! 20 quid! Little did I know, I just bought a one-way ticket to Shitsville. <laughs> because all of a sudden, in this corner of the pub, I hear, in what can only be described as a Bill Sykes voice, Someone go, you fucking man united! <laughs> I turn around and I see a man who, no word of a lie, must be about 15 foot tall, come steaming through the pub, knocking through crowds of people who are falling over like Stephen Hawking on an ice rink. <laughs> he walks right up to me, looms over the front of me, and goes, you fucking man united! You fucking man united! I'm so out of my comfort. So it's unbelievable. I mean, I'm not a hard man at the best of times, right? If you put me in a suit, I look like Fred the Home Pride. <laughs> so I'm totally, totally out of my comfort zone. I freeze. I'm paralysed with fear. I freeze like the internet when I'm looking at Paul and my mum walks in. <laughs> it carries on. You fucking man united! You fucking man united! And then something incredible happens. My dad, who's been standing just here, all of a sudden turns from a greying, middle-aged man into Ray Winston. <laughs> <coughs> he walks up to Bill Sykes and he says, What you fucking say to my son? <laughs> if you've got anything to say to my son, you can say it to me first. <laughs> And this takes a lot of balls because this bloke looked hard, right? He looked like he moisturised with sandpaper and mess. <laughs> so at this stage, my brother wades in as well. He walks up and stands next to my dad. He's flanking him. <laughs> Everyone in the pub is now watching. And I realise this is more than just a barroom brawl. This is about family. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
I look at my dad and my brother standing there, they're like the Mitchell brothers or the Crays. I look at myself standing there like one of the Olsen twins. <laughs> And I decide that I've got to get involved. Because after all, I've caused all this because I don't know how to behave around men properly. <laughs> so I take one step towards danger when my brother turns around and says, George, stay in the corner and look after the coats! <laughs> Susan Boyle's haircut. <laughs> it was in that moment I knew what my role in life was. It wasn't the role of the handsome lover, nor was it the role of the hero. I was the bloke that got raped in the prison showers. <laughs> so I, I stayed in the corner, walled up like Rapunzel, and I watched the events unfold. After a couple of minutes, Bill Sykes' snarl turns back into a smile. My dad morphs back from Ray Winston into a grey-haired, middle-aged man. And then all of a sudden, Bill Sykes is walking off to the bar with my dad and my brother. He's buying them drinks. I think, my God, we've won. And we've made a new friend. <laughs> and then I realise that we haven't made a new friend. Yeah. My dad and my brother have made a new friend because I'm still stuck in the corner looking after the coast like somebody's mum. <laughs> Thank you very much, I've been joined.